Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Naya J. And if you're here to stay, make sure you like and make sure you comment and make sure you subscribe. And if you're here to go, just watch this video because I promise this for you. You didn't end up on, on here for no reason. Come on now, it's YouTube for heaven's sakes. You didn't end up here for no reason and or, or on accident. Excuse the wrinkles in my shirt. I was rushing for an interview today that turned out not to be an interview and they stood me up, but that's not the point of today's word. I wanna to speak to the people who are sick of hearing prophetic words. I wanna to speak to the people who are tired of hearing what the, what God said and God is gonna bless you and God is gonna give you abundance and the Lord is gonna bring this for you. And you're like, bro, I'm so sick of hearing that. Like I haven't seen anything that y'all are promising me. I'm, to, I'm here to talk to the people who watch the TikTok videos or the short YouTube shorts or the reels of people saying, oh, God, it's going to do this for you. And you have to skip the video because you just can't you can't listen to it anymore because you've been hearing it and you've been hearing it and you've been hearing it. And this is me, too, in this season. But I'm going to relate to you right now. I want to tell you that I relate to you. I want to tell you that you're not by yourself. You haven't even looked at sermons anymore. You haven't even watched T.D. Jakes, you stop watching Sarah Jakes, you stop watching Pastor Stephen Furtick, you stop watching Prophet Lovi, you stop looking at prophecies, you stop praying, you start reading your Bible because you're in a place where you feel like God don't hear you no more or he don't care about what you have to say no more. And it feels a little awkward to even talk to God because it's like he keeps promising you these things or maybe God isn't promising you these things and maybe it's just the people trying to get you hyped up to like their video and give them more views. Maybe God isn't promising you these things. Maybe they just want more um, um, comments under their video maybe they just want to be famous for being a prophetic word youtuber or listen god speaks to you and if you have to turn off the tv if you have to turn off the sermons if you have to turn off the tiktoks and the youtube words and prophetic words then that's fine god is strategic and he takes everything that satan meant for evil and turns it for good so even though you're tired you're going to spend that time. You can spend the time that you're not spending watching sermons, reading your Bible and in intimacy with God. Because watching a sermon does not make up for reading your Bible. Looking at a prophetic word does not make up for reading your Bible. It, it doesn't. It's not like a switch off where you can. OK, well, I'm not going to read my Bible today. I'm just going to watch a sermon instead. That's not how it works. Maybe the reason why you're tired and God has you in a season of being tired of hearing it because he wants you to start doing. You've heard enough prophetic words. Your ears, have, your ears have been itchy enough. You've heard enough. Maybe God wants to get you to a place to where it's like, okay, fine, God. Fine. I surrender. I surrender all. It has nothing to do with me. God, I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't take this anymore. I can't listen to not one more prophetic word. I can't sit here and pretend like I'm happy. I can't sit here and be happy for the people who keep getting blessed and I'm not getting blessed. Yes, I understand that when they're getting blessed, that means the blessing is in the neighborhood, but when is it gonna come to my house? God, I'm tired. So whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. I have nothing else to lose. I'm at rock bottom. The glory of being at rock bottom means that you can't go low no more. The beauty of being at the bottom and hitting rock bottom is that the only where left to go is up. You can't go anywhere else but up. That's the beauty of being at rock bottom. That's the wonders of being at rock bottom. It's a perspective shift. It's a mindset change. The renewing of your mind, thank you, Holy Spirit. And this is confirmation for me too. That's how I know it's going to be for you. Because we are one body. And if I needed it, then I know that you need it. You're my sister. You're my brother. I understand you. Get off TikTok. Get off YouTube. I know you're watching this on YouTube. But when you find time, when you, when, when you feel like it, when you feel God pulling you and pushing you to get off, get off. God tells me to get off for it. So I don't even watch YouTube anymore. There's nothing interesting on there. Every time I see a prophetic word, I'll scroll past it. Or before it, before even watching it as a whole, I know it's not for me because I know God is not speaking to me. God already told me what he told me for the season that I'm in. I don't need to look for different and more words in order to feel a fulfillment. Some of you look for prophetic words because you don't trust the word out of God's mouth. And you only trust it out of the mouth of his messengers or of his prophets or of his teachers or of his preachers. You trust more of the physical than you do him, but that's not operating in faith that's operating in physical and faith is not the things physical or seen faith is the things that are unseen 
I understand you're tired of hearing prosperity gospel. I understand that you're tired of hearing it's going to work out for you and God is going to do it for you. But I promise if you just get up and put some works behind that faith, that the faith is going to work out for you. The faith is going to give you what you've been praying for. And the faith is going to give you that business. And the faith is going to give you that job. And the faith is going to give you those finances. And the faith is going to give you that freedom. The faith is going to give you that good health. And the faith is going to give you everything that you've been praying for. But you need to understand that faith is not things that are seen. You need to move without being able to see. Peter, you need to get off the boat and you need to go walk. Faith is not the things that you see with your eyes. It's not the things that you can feel with your hands. It's the things you can feel in here. It's the things that you can see in here. I saw it in my head first. I saw it in my imaginations. I saw it in my heart. I saw it in my dreams and in my visions. I felt it in my gut. I felt it in my belly. Though That's faith. That's what you need to lean on. I know it's hard to lean on things that are not physical because you're going to fall. You're like, Lord, I, I feel like I'm going to fall, but that's because you're telling yourself you're going to fall. But if you tell your brain, hey, there is a wall here, regardless of me being able to see the wall, you're going to lean and you won't fall. Huh? You're going to lean and you're going to realize, oh, I have a support system. Oh, I have a foundation. You need to understand that it's about faith and not about what you see, feel, hear, touch, taste, or smell. It's about faith. Walk that faith out. If you say that you believe that there is gas in this car, why are you not driving the car? And why are you still stuck in the driveway? If you say that you trust what God is saying, why have you not gotten to it and gotten started? If you say that you believe what God is saying, if you say that you believe God's plan for your life, why have you not gotten started? If you say that you have faith in where God is taking you and the destination that you're going to end up at, why have you not pushed on the gas why have you not started your foot is on the brake if you believe that you won't crash then why is your foot still on the brake if you believe you need to have the faith to where you 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 have so much faith that you can drive without a seatbelt. don't do that that's not what i'm telling you to do but hear me in the spirit those who have ears let them hear your faith needs to be as strong so strong that you can ride in your car without a seatbelt, going 100 miles per hour and you know that you won't crash because God got you. Now, that's not me telling you to go be stupid. Don't go be stupid. You need to hear me in the spirit. Your faith needs to be dumb faith. Your faith needs to be stupid faith. If you were to look at Peter back then before he walked on that water, if, if Peter were to be here right now in the physical, in our generation, and you saw Peter because you didn't hear Jesus tell you because when God tells you things and when God gives you a vision, only you can hear it. So you see Peter right now and you see Peter step off of a boat and all of a sudden he's telling you he's about to go walk on the water he don't even tell you he's gonna go walk on the water he just gets out and walks on the water and, and and you're like what are you doing peter you're gonna drown what what are you doing you're a human are you trying to sink you can't even swim that's how it looks to the people around you when you're doing what god told you to do but because peter heard the voice he said okay even though i'm scared even though i'm sweating even though i'm nervous i'm about to go step out on this boat and i'm scared and i'm scared but i'm gonna jump and he said i'm gonna jump so he jumped and he walked on that water the people around him looked at him like, are you crazy? But he said, no, I heard the voice. I heard what God said to me. I heard God speak to me. I'm doing what God said. Because if I allow you to sit here and, and let your opinion stop me from being obedient, then God can't prove a point through me. But because Peter didn't allow the people around him to stop him, didn't allow the people's opinions around him to stop him, he stepped out on that water. And though he looked stupid to the people around him, he was pleasing to God's sight. He was pleasing to God's eyes. He was pleasing to the Father. It pleased him. And when Peter started to sink, because he got a little, he got a little nervous. He got a little nervous. That sounds a lot like you. Once you get the momentum, you start to get a little nervous. Once you get enough momentum, you start to get a little frightened. And God, okay, I, 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 I know I said I trusted you, but I don't know if I trust you that much no more. He started to sink and God said, I got you. Because you obeyed me, because you showed me that you had the guts to listen, because you had the faith. I'm going to save you. You won't die. You will not die. God says in this season, you will not die. You will live and you will not die. You will live and you will not die. You will live and you will not die. In Jesus' name, you will live and you will not die in this season. Step out on faith, Peter. <laughs> Step out on the water, Peter. Step off of the boat. This is the same lifeboat that has kept your ancestors stuck. The same lifeboat that has kept your family stuck for all generations and generations and generations of trauma. It's the same lifeboat that your family has been. It's the safety net. 
God said, I need you to move from the safety net because if you understood me and you knew my word for real, you know that I am the safety net. I am the I am. I am safety. I am love. If you will get away from this man-made safety net, that safety net is keeping you in bondage. He says, let it go. He says, let it go. He says, let it go. Let it go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let it go. He says, I got you. <laughs> he says, I got you, but I need you to have stupid faith. I need you to have Peter faith. I need you to have crazy faith. If it don't look crazy to the people around you, then your faith ain't faith in enough. I need you to have dumb faith. See, Peter could have said, I have faith, God. I know that you won't let me sink. I know that you won't allow this boat to sink. But if he stayed on the boat and he didn't go nowhere, you're all talk. You're telling me that you have faith, but you're still on the boat. Walk. That's faith. I love you guys so very much. I pray that this word hits you. I pray that it touched you. I pray that it gets to wherever it needs to get to. In Jesus' name, I ask that you allow this word to touch you. It touches to touch millions, to touch billions of people on this platform and other platforms in Jesus' name. And as we bring this prayer to a close, we count it as done in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Give them boldness, courage, and faith. I impart faith into them in Jesus' name. I impart boldness, courage, and confidence into them in Jesus' name. To hear you and listen to you in Jesus' name. I love you and God loves you more. Make sure you educate so that we don't generate more lost generations. Love and light, y'all. I love you. And God loves you more. Peace.